Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,357. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1,357 start or the finished file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a great video here. We're going to learn how to build a Power Query function to repeat, clean, and transform steps for multiple Excel files. Now, we'll go look at the files in just a moment, but here's going to be our full list of all of our files. And inside each one of those files is a cross-tabulated table. Now, look at this table. We have products here, but then at the top of each column, we have the fair name and the date. And then the inside are units sold. Not only that, but the sales rep name is going to be in the Sheet tab. So we need to take all of these files, and we will actually build a Power Query function that will clean and transform each one of these files and give us one proper data set. Now let's go look at our Excel files. We're going to go over to Windows Explorer. When you download the files, there will be a zipped folder called 1357 source files. You'll have to unzip it. Now inside that folder is a start and four Excel files. If I double click and look inside the start, these are the four files we're going to start with. Now if I double click and open one of those, you can see there is our cross tab table with two column headers product over at the front of each row, and there is our sales rep name. I'm going to close this file. Now, this video is going to have a lot of step. It's going to be a power-packed Power Query lesson with all sorts of amazing steps. Now, let's go over to the sheet Create Function. What I did is I took one of the files and pasted it here. That way, we can perform the steps to unpivot, including both criteria or conditions at the top of each column, unpivot it, create one proper data set, and then we'll copy that code and use it to create a function that can be used on all of the other Excel files. Now, in order to get this into Power Query, we're going to have to convert it to an Excel table. So with the single cell somewhere in this table, I go up to Insert Table, or I use the keyboard Control-T. I'm definitely unchecking my table has headers. Click OK. I'm going to need both of these items down inside the table to do my transformation. Now I want to name this table, so I go up to Design, and I'm going to name it. I call it something long. I called it Start Data to Build Power Query Function. All right, so I have a single cell in this proper Excel table. I'm using Excel 2016, so my Power Query is up in data, get and transform. If you're in Excel 2010 or 13, you actually have to download it as a separate Power Query tab. Now, if we're going to take our data from an Excel table and bring it into Power Query, we have to use the From Table button. Or we can use the keyboard Alt-A-P-T. Now here's our Power Query Editor window. We have our name, and there are some steps. We do not need the Change type, so I'm going to point in the Applied Steps pane to that red X and click to delete it. Now here's our cross-tabulated table. Two conditions at the top and one condition at the head of the row. We need to unpivot this. But one of the steps is going to be to promote headers. And since we have two conditions or criteria here at the top of each column and one at the head of the row, we actually want to promote just the row header for product. So we first need to transpose this table, get the date and fair name into a single column, and the product name at the top of each column. So I come up to Transform, and there's the Transpose Table button. There we have our date and fair and the product at the top of each column. Now we need to promote the headers from the first row. So we come to the icon in the upper left-hand corner, use first row as headers, or I can simply use this button up in the Transform group. And there it is. The product is now the column header. Now we need to unpivot these so that products are in a single column. Now think about this. What this column means is each one of these units 
is for the Bellin product. So when I unpivot, it will create with these two conditions and that unit, Bellin, these two conditions, that unit, and Bellin. So from this column right here, we'll get five records in the resulting unpivoted proper data set. Now I need to select date and product fair. So I hold shift, click on product fair. To unpivot, I go to transform, drop down and unpivot other columns, or right click, unpivot other columns. And look at that. We have one, two, three, and four columns. Now we need to rename some of these. And I'm not going to change the data type, because we'll actually change the data type in our next query. Date is a fine name. I'm going to double click Product and Fair and just call it Fair and Enter. Double click Attribute. We're going to call this Product and Enter. Double click Value, and we'll call this Units and Enter. Now there are our steps. We're going to save this query by going up to Home, Close and Load, Close and Load 2. I definitely want to load it as a connection only and click Load. There it is. And we loaded it as a connection only query instead of creating in our first step here the actual function because it's easier to come back and edit and debug this than it is a Power Query function. But I'm going to need that code. And so watch this. I'm going to right click that query and point to Duplicate. I immediately want to come over and name this query. I'm going to call it fx dash. I called it unpivot each fair table and Enter. Now, in order to convert this to a function, we have to go up and look at the M code, View Ribbon Tab, Advanced Editor. Now let's take a look at our M code. It's always going to start with let. Each line will have the name of this step, an equal sign, and then the function that's enacting the code for that line, followed by a comma. But notice this first step doesn't have double quotes and a pound sign. Yes, there's no spaces, so we don't need those. But why in the world does this step have double quotes and a pound sign? Because to differentiate a step name from actual text, like down here for date, attribute, value, we have a pound sign at the beginning. That differentiates it from text and says, this is the step name. Now, there's the equal sign, the function. And for each one of these lines and each one of these functions, you always have to list the previous step, which is the output from that step, is going to be further transformed in this line of code. Notice pound sign, double quote transpose table. That step is listed right there. And then if you look in each function, there's the previous step name, previous step name. We finally end with in, and you have to repeat the name of the last step, because that's going to be the output for Power Query. Now for us, as a function, we do not need this first line. So I'm going to highlight it and hit Delete. There's our four lines of code. To convert it to a function, I click before let, Enter, Enter, Up Arrow, Up Arrow. And we're going to list the variable input. Because remember, for us, we're going to be getting a bunch of files that have a cross-tab table. So our variable is going to be this first step table.transpose, and it will be fair table. Now I'm going to double click, copy, and come up here and define this as a function. Open parentheses, Control V, there's our variable name. Close parentheses, and then an equal sign and a greater than symbol. That defines the function. It now knows to take that variable name. And look down here, it's as if that arrow is pointing down here and it's going to use it down here in the M code. That is our function. When I click Done, there is our function. Notice over here it has a single applied step, and that's much different than our first query where we had many steps. Now we're going to load this home, and I'm just going to click Close and Load because it will only load as a connection. That means we have access to that function in other queries. Now, our goal is to get all of those files in. So now our third query will be data, new query, from file, and from folder. 
we click Browse. I loaded my Start folder to the desktop. But notice, we're telling Power Query, please get all the files from inside that folder. Click OK. Click OK. In this intermediate step, let's click Edit. Now, it lists each one of the files and attributes for the file. We definitely want to come over here. And the very first step is to name this. This is going to be our consolidated table. I called it Consolidated Fair Data Table and Enter. Now, you can see attributes like extension. Well, because we're in Power Query, we could actually use this filter to prevent any other file types besides .xlsx. Now, if we were sure that we only had .xlsx in that folder, we wouldn't have to do this step. But I'm going to be super careful here. The first thing I'm going to do, since sometimes extensions can be all capital, I'm going to right click, transform, and say, please only show as lowercase. There's our step added over here. Now I can come to the drop down, text filters, and I want to say, only import things that are equal to the extension .xlsx and click OK. Now, we don't need any of these, but let's just take a look at the content column. It says binary, but when you click on it, notice it's given this icon here. And in an Excel file, there may be lots of objects like sheets, tables, defined names. Now, that little button right there, if these were text files, not Excel files, we can simply click this to expand the columns. Now, I just read an article. This downward pointing double arrow in Power BI Desktop now can handle Excel files. Hopefully, that feature will come to Excel Power Query soon. But for now, we can't click that to get at the data. We're actually going to have to remove all the other columns, right click Remove Other Columns, and then add an extra column to get at the Excel objects from in the Excel file. So we go up to Add Column, Custom Column. I'm going to call this Get Excel Objects. And the function we use is Excel.Workbook. Now we have to be careful with Power Query functions. Spelling and case matter. So I'm very careful. I have Excel.Workbook. And there's the content field. That's the name of this field over here that has each Excel file. Double click, close parentheses, and click OK. Now, if I click on off to the side next to table, I can see, well, it's got a different set of columns for each file, the name of the object, the type of the object, and so on. So now we're going to use the Expand button. Be sure to uncheck Use Original Column Names as Prefix and click OK. Now watch this in the Data column. If I click Next to Table, there's our preview. That's the cross-tab table. Notice it comes in as column 1, column 2, column 3. And when we created our code for our function, we started off our table that way. So now we can add an extra column and use that M code to convert each one of these files. That's pretty amazing. Before we do that, let's make sure that each Excel file has only the objects we want. Now, kind lists the type of objects. Now, we only want sheets as opposed to tables and defined names. So I'm going to click the Filter button, Text Files. And this column should only have items that are equal to sheet. And notice I better spell it right and have that S capitalized. Click OK. Now, that's the object type. But also, someone might have had a sheet in one of these that accidentally had the default name Sheet 1, Sheet 2, Sheet 3. So I'm going to filter this column, too. I'm being extra careful here. Text filters. And I want sheets to be imported that do not contain the word sheet. Click OK. Now, the only two columns we're going to need are name and data. So I have name, hold Control, click Data, right click, remove other columns. Now we can add our extra column with our function. And look at this. I have the latest version of Power Query. And instead of using Custom Column, which is easy enough, they have an Invoke Custom Function button. 
the new column name is going to be something like unpivot fair tables. And there it is, a function query dropdown. Now, we only have one function. You could have many. But there it is, unpivot each fair table. And we want that function to work on the data column. So I'm going to come here, drop down, and make sure it says data. Click OK. And now click Next to Table. There is the unpivoted table for each one of our Excel files. That's pretty amazing. Now we need to get rid of data, so right click Remove. We can now use the Expand button to get at each one of these tables. There are the field names. Click OK. And there we have the sales rep plus each one of our unpivoted tables stacked one on top of the other. Now let's clean this up. I'm going to change the data type. Instead of going up to Transform, Data Type dropdown, I'm going to use this icon. Click, and this is going to be text. Click. This is going to be date. Icon, this one's going to be data type text. Icon, data type text. And the data type for this one will be whole numbers. So we changed each one of the types. We can see that step down here. I'm going to make sure that each one of the names are what I want. I don't want name. I want sales rep. And enter. Date, fair, product units, looking good. Now, we have used our function. We have our end result. So now we go to Home, Close and Load, Close and Load 2. And we have three choices. Now, we can dump it as a table into the Excel spreadsheet. I could also do only create a connection and actually access through the pivot table dialog box if I had a small data set. Sometimes that's convenient. I also could check Add this to the data model, especially if I have big data. That is the way to go. I'm going to uncheck all. I'm dumping it as a table on a new worksheet. Click OK. Now I can see the query over here. 182 records have been loaded. And there is the data set, sales rep, date, fair, product, and units. Pretty amazing to take all of those cross-tab tables, one from each Excel file, and create one proper data set. I'm going to come down here and double click, something like Fair Data Table, and Enter. Now we want to test our query, because the reason we went through all of these steps is we have this query pointing towards a folder. So let's go over to Windows Explorer, and I'm going to select File Mo, hold Shift all the way to Tyrone, Control C, double click Start, Control V. Now there's the folder that Power Query is pointing to, there's eight files. So now when I come back over to Excel, right click, refresh, and look at that. Now there's 389 rows loaded from eight cross-tab tables, one in each Excel file. That is pretty amazing. Now in this video, we saw how to go from a bunch of Excel files, each as a cross-tab table, build a Power Query function, use it in a query, and create one updatable proper data set. All right, we'll see you next video.